Hi, thank you. Thanks. Yeah, it's really nice to be here. Uh, my name is Jeremiah Eister. I created this shelf you see behind me, and I'm going to show you how you can create a similar shelf. First, I'd like to uh, read something I wrote here. It's called Include in Shelf Video. This is straight from my notes app. I love when an aquarium fits beautifully in a space. In addition to the aquarium itself looking great. I want my small aquariums to be front and center in my living space. To display them, I wanted a shelf that would look amazing in my apartment and to not diminish the beauty of the aquariums, but also be able to hold the weight of my aquariums. As I searched the internet, I learned that strong but attractive shelving is hard to find. Most shelves are rated for only about 40 or 50 pounds per level, while a single 10 gallon aquarium weighs about 100 pounds. Shelves that can hold extreme weight look like they're designed to sit in storage rooms or warehouses and just aren't ideal for display in a living room. Finally, I struggled to find a shelf that would accommodate the type of spacing I needed. Most options are sized for books and trinkets, not a standard sized aquarium. I wanted a shelf that was adjustable and can accommodate any height of aquarium I choose to own. To meet all of these needs, I created the shelf behind me. Let's now take a journey back to when the shelf build began. This is what I've kept the aquariums on since I moved into my current apartment. As you can see, I have a trash bag on top of this piece of furniture. I wanted to protect it from any possible water spills, and it's just not a great look. It's about time to create the shelf and get this piece of furniture out into a different room where it'll look a lot better. All of the metal frame parts for this shelf came from a company called 8020. Their website allowed me to download CAD files for each piece that I was going to use so I could test it out beforehand in CAD and rearrange things and make sure the look was exactly what I wanted. As you can see by the ends of the aluminum extrusions here, um, not all of them have the same profile and that's so that I can have a nice clean smooth look where I want it and also have the T-slots where I want them for attaching hardware. Little bonus tip for you if you are inspired by this and decide to make your own shelf. These rods are very long so you might whack a light fixture or something like that and uh, accidentally scare yourself. So watch out for that. Just a short way into this process I realized that I really needed to get my laptop out. I needed to reference some of the plans that I had made in my CAD file. I have a ruler here too. I'm making sure that everything on the ground is matching what I planned beforehand. And yeah, just double checking before I lock things into place. If you're watching this and you're all excited to make this shelf, but you're like, oh, shit, I don't have a CAD software. Uh, good news, I'm putting in the, the description some uh, directions you should be able to follow to make this and you won't have to reference any CAD file. So you can thank me just by liking, subscribing and uh, sharing with all your friends. Uh, I hear that's the way to get famous and, you know, making this aquarium shelf is kind of my rise to fame. And if you can just thank me that way, that'd be awesome. All right, enough of me talking. Let's uh, cue the music and watch some good time lapse of me crawling around the ground like an animal. Hey!
All right, I'm just finishing up the shelf and uh, doing the final touches. I ordered the vertical extrusions with some pre-tapped screw holes in the end. I attached these leveling feet to make sure that the shelf is nice and balanced and sturdy. I would never want a couple hundred pounds of aquarium water to come crashing down. That would uh, really suck. Please enjoy the free stock music I downloaded. The title is Stoned. I dressed my best and went to Home Depot for some wood supplies. My original plan was to make all of the shelves out of solid wood, but I quickly realized how expensive that would be. What you see here is plywood that someone sold me out of their garage. With some iron-on edge banding, no one can tell it's not real wood. Okay, it's still real, but you know, not solid wood. Since these shelves will definitely be exposed to some uh, water spills over time, I made sure to thoroughly seal them with several coats of polyurethane. Once the shelves were finished, I moved on to making the cabinet. I started by laying out and labeling every board to make sure that I'd be making the right cuts on the table saw. Creating a cabinet definitely took the most work out of the whole project, but it's kind of optional if you want to make your own shelf like this. I think it's time to cue the uh, assembly sequence music again. I, I really liked that. Hey, can we get a little... Uh... Hey! So here we are in my apartment, back from my father-in-law's shop, and I've realized that all the connectors I used for the frame are no good. I had decided to go with these special hidden connectors that sit fully into the T-slot. My hope was that they would contribute to the seamless look of the shelf. But like when you have a few beers with friends and you stand up, you don't know how wobbly you are until you're on your feet. That's kind of how this was. As soon as I stood it up and gave it a little push. I realized that this shelf was very tipsy. I removed all of the original connectors and replaced them with a different model that's a lot, lot stronger. Another tip for you in case you decide to build this shelf, uh, don't put it together on a rug with a lot of crazy patterns because you will lose your tool every five seconds. Where did my tool go? Something else I decided to do to keep the shelf extra stable is create a bracket out of a piece of aluminum that I could attach to the wall. This was supposed to be a video of me painting that bracket black, but my wife was the camera woman and it just seems like she had something else on her mind. In the end, I didn't actually end up using the bracket because when I set the shelf up, it was super strong, super sturdy, and I knew I didn't need it. Once I reordered the hardware, and maybe even before that point, the overall cost for this project reached what I would consider to be about in the designer shelf price range. It's a little expensive for most people, including myself. So if you're planning to make this, uh, one thing you could do to lower the price is to order the aluminum extrusions in a very standard size. If you order bars that are an inch by an inch instead of 25 millimeters like I did, you can find a lot of the hardware and pieces uh, for cheaper through other websites. I wish now that I had done this, but at least I get to pass the knowledge on to you. For your enjoyment and totally on purpose, I installed the cabinet onto the shelf in the clumsiest way possible. <laughs> I had to try a few ways of getting the cabinet in before I found something that worked.
Once the shelf and all the aquariums were set up, it was time for me to hide the jungle of hanging wires. To do this, I 3D printed two different types of wire retainers. I found the files for both of these online. Wires can also be held in place using zip ties or with special cable clamps found on 8020's website. I finished the shelf off by adding some T-slot covers in important areas. These help to keep dust out of the hard to reach grooves, and they help to keep the grooves less noticeable, especially right on the end of the bars where the profile contrasts with the floor. Finally, I used command strips to attach this surge protector power strip. I like that it packs 12 outlets into a fairly compact space, and they're all at different orientations, so it can accommodate a lot of different kinds of plugs. And that wraps up the shelf build. Time to take a look at the final result. Alright, that's all for the video, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, join my email list, support me on Patreon, GoFundMe, OnlyFans, and Venmo, and join my community of scalies. It's like furries, but we dress as fish. Alright, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.